you're watching Faith and Reason. A discussion about God, politics, and pop culture. From the perspective of our pastors, who are not afraid to tackle and ask the hard questions. A Christian talk show for those on a spiritual journey. This is Faith and Reason. Good evening. Welcome to Faith and Reason, a show that looks at issues that are going on in today's society in the light of the Word of God. I'm Pastor George Crespo, First Baptist Church in Clifton Park. With us today is uh, Brother David uh, from St. Rocco and... St. Uh, Anthony's. St. Anthony's. Anthony's. Union City. Uh, also St. Rocco, you work down there as well, right? Uh, St. Anthony, oh. okay. And uh, Pastor Rick... I was about to call you doctor. Yeah, uh, doctor. Uh, <laughs> Reverend yeah. uh, Rick Spence from uh, Fort Lee Gospel. <laughs> soon, to be have, soon to have a doctorate. Maybe. Um, to, uh, this evening we want to talk, obviously we were joking before the show, and we haven't calmed down. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to talk this evening about uh, politics and Christianity, um, how the two connect, where they don't connect, and certainly, especially in, in light of the political atmosphere that's going on today, certainly we want to know about um, how Christians should be viewing the elections. Uh, but first, we want to get maybe a little background on a little history on the evangelical mainline Protestant and Roman Catholic engagement in politics. So, um, mm -hmm. so uh, past, uh, Brother David, would you begin by telling us, give us a, just a brief history of a... Yeah. On the church channel that I watch, EWTN, the Eternal Word Network, uh, they have prayers and it's based on selecting a candidate that has issues that match Catholic values, Christian values, perhaps even Jewish and Muslim ones at that. Mm -hmm. And so they're speaking in terms of uh, the values, family values, morals, the abortion issue, uh, all the issues that would cause us to say we can identify that are Catholic issues of morality mm -hmm. as opposed to the individual candidates and some of their quirks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Rick? Well, let me back up in terms of history. Um, the evangelical movement uh, in politics really uh, came to light in the moral majority 1980s kind of time frame um, you know uh, more uh, th you know more liberal uh, Protestants had been more involved in politics in the early part after the social gospel at the beginning of the 20th century and there'd been some involvement that way but for the most part if you were an evangelical Christian in 1950 let's say uh, you were probably discouraged from any political engagement, but it was really, um, you know, the 1980s where Christians began to get engaged, or, or some would even argue in, in response to Roe versus Wade, 1973, that that started to mobilize uh, Christian voices, uh, evangelical in particular, and that's where uh, Roman Catholics and evangelicals often joined forces on that abortion issue. Uh, but they, they began to get more involved and continue to be involved um, since the 70s and 80s, um, and, and, and that has continued. And, and now, uh, in, uh, for many people, and, and this is part of the reason for the program, is that, um, that the evangelical block of voters is often seen as one of the most reliable Republican votes in the nation. And we're not in a particularly evangelical part of the country, uh, more the Midwest and the South, uh, they're, they're a stronger block down there. Uh, even though Pastor George and I, we count our tradition to be a part of that. Um, except for the white part. Yeah, except we're not white. <laughs> That's true. So, uh, but, but that, that is a big part of, uh, of the country and, and uh, uh, that's a part of the political engagement and um, it's interesting. Uh, well, that, that'll lead us next to the next question. Why, especially this, uh, <coughs> among whites, why is there that tendency among white evangelicals to be Republican? And this part we also maybe we'll distinguish between the younger generation, which I think is mm -hmm. not, well, well, not I, I want to talk more about that secondly, but mm -hmm. first, why is this older generation of the whites, why are they so uh, in tune more to the Republican Party? Yeah. Um, I, I would put it this way, is that uh, that the Republicans have uh, often spoke uh, a language that they've been in, in step with. For the most part, white evangelicals don't live in urban centers, so they're not as concerned about issues of poverty, issues of race, as, as some other demographics in the country. Um, then 
white evangelicals um, have been mobilized by primarily two issues more than any other. And the first was the abortion, and more recently it's been the gay rights issues. And so uh, there, is a, there is a sense that uh, white evangelicals look for a more traditional America, sort of a 1950s morality America, mm -hmm is almost upheld as the standard. You know, let's go back to Leave it to Beaver and, uh, mm. and those kind of family values. And, and so that has been, you know, the dominant issue. So other issues have become secondary, you know, taxation, wars, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and, and so, uh, but those, those social um, morality issues have been of primary importance in in the evangelical tradition that is mm -hmm. primarily white, which, and, and, and to contrast it, the black church, which shares many religious values to white evangelicals, uh, has been very aligned with the Democratic Party because they're looking at different issues. Um, even though you know most African American uh, Christians I know have issues, they're they're not supportive of abortion, let's say, or or pushing for the gay rights issue, but they're also um, uh, they're they're elevating other issues to be of prominence and and why they vote for a candidate. Mm. Any, anything to add to that, Brother David? Well, I think that he's right on target with it all. It is, you know, you have a perspective that your nationality is how you identify. And in the Catholic Church, we have a lot of Hispanics and some blacks, mm -hmm. not as much, but we do. And so there's a more universal approach to the different personalities and characters. But let's face facts. Kennedy was a Catholic and a Democrat. Yes. And I voted for him. I had a sense of who he was, how he was. I didn't really know all his background. I didn't know his bedroom no, stories. No, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. But then uh, let's not get into Clinton either. Yeah, right. Uh, him, not her. <laughs> so what yeah. I find myself saying is that people tend to identify with things that they're familiar with and they agree with. Mm -hmm. It's in keeping with their values. Mm -hmm. right. And th that's what I would just share yeah, in, yeah. the idea of yeah. it. Now contrast that with the with the younger generation. We see this shift going on, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, first of all, either uh, disengagement from the secular youth, and uh, Christian youth seem to be more open to other possibilities other than, let's say, Republican. Right. Right. No, I, and um, you know, I, again, I'm, we're stereotyping grossly. You know, there's obviously uh, there's dissenting mm -hmm. voices in the evangelical tradition, but for the most part. Uh, white evangelicals in this country are strongly Republican, but their children are growing <laughs> up and their children are saying, uh, you know, we believe that climate change is a real issue and we support government programs that address those issues. Uh, that's a high value to them. Um, they also grow up in a culture where they're okay with their, their good friend coming out as gay and they want them to have rights and uh, they may they may look at it through a moral lens of um, you know whether or not it's right or wrong, but uh, but they don't want government to to hinder mm -hmm. the rights of their homosexual friends. And so now now you have young evangelicals, um, and, and they're not just stuck on two issues, and they're not just uh, they're looking at uh, the greed of the Republican Party and the the you know the base being the the billionaires in Wall Street and in that side, and they're not happy. Um, a lot of them were Bernie Sanders supporters. I, I have to say, m my own two children like Bernie Sanders, and and uh, I'm not sure if they're fully on board with uh, Clinton yet. But uh, but they're still that's a part of that youthful mm -hmm. demographic uh, where where uh, you know those are you know fifteen dollar minimum wage is an issue when you're when you're twenty years of age or twenty two mm -hmm. years of age, and so um, so those are the kind of things that. Um, that have led, uh, you know, what I would say is the young evangelicals are not lining up behind the Republican Party in the same way that their parents were. A anything else to add to that, Brother David? Um, for my own sake, and I keep telling people this, I'm, I'm voting and looking to the issues mm -hmm. and not to the candidates. Uh, neither one would be my choice. Uh, and some of the other, the rejects, I would have chosen over them. Mm -hmm. So, and yet I have to remind myself, and I ask God for help with this, um, Moses was chosen by God, even though he was a murderer, and even though he uh, was not that obedient, God's foreknowledge of, the, of the tapping the rock, but when Moses said, send my brother Aaron, he speaks better, it reminds me of the politicians that speak better, 
and to say, well, that's nice, but Aaron was down below with the Jews and the golden calf, while Moses was coming down with the commandments for mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So you find yourself saying, I choose what God chose, even yeah. though the character's a little off. Well, I think there, you know, um, you touch upon an important, important point that um, the millennials, from what I've been reading, and I certainly sympathize with them, one of the reasons I think they don't have um, a liking to the Republican Party, per se, is because, again, you brought it back to the 1950s, Leave it to Beaver, and I think that they see it more as a going back to a culture in America rather than to biblical principles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think when you say to them principles, that's why they can't align themselves with any party. They'll say, I agree with the Republicans here, I agree with Democrats here, I agree with the independents here. Mm -hmm. they're, they're more open because they're not fixated right. on, on a party line. They're fixated yeah. on issues. Right. You know, like I said, you know, the climate, helping the poor. Yes. You yeah. know, so they're, they're more in tune to that, uh, as opposed to the older generation, which already know what they're going to do, and mm -hmm. you know, it's predictable. That which when at go. this point is us. Hmm? Yeah, we're, well, yeah, we're there. We're there. Well, actually, you know, actually, I, 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 like I said, I sympathize more with the millennial. I think that one of the, um, one of the great failures of the church, is that it has become the follower rather than the leader, mm -hmm. and that we are we are letting the 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 Democratic Party and the Republican Party dictate to us. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, yesterday I preached on um, on a topic, and part of it had dealt with uh, the issue of immigrants. Now, I'm, I'm a registered Republican. I disagree with Republicans. I disagree with the wall. I disagree with this nonsense. I believe there is a, there is a correct way of uh, integrating people. We are a nation of immigrants. Uh, mm -hmm. So again, by preaching that, the millennials agree with me. Now, t two weeks before that, I preached against uh, uh, hate crimes and stuff like that and violence against police and things of that nature. And certainly the Republicans would have, but to me, it's not a question, it's a question of what the mm -hmm. Bible says. Right. Yes. And I, I, I'm, you know, how do we react to this fact that you have like, you know, when you talk to Democrats, Jesus sounds very Democrat. Mm -hmm. When you talk to Republicans, Jesus sounds very Republican. Mm -hmm. how, do, how, do you, how do you deal with that in, in your ministries? Well, I mean, for me, I, 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 I like the old saying that says, you know, God made man in his image, and we've mm -hmm. been trying to return the favor ever since. We're trying to make right. God in our right. image. We're trying to make him with mm -hmm. our values. And, uh, and, and I agree with you, and, and an amen to your point is that is that we need to do a better job of allowing the Word of God to speak to the issues instead of allowing our culture to speak to the issues. And, uh, and, and I know that there's, you know, we, we live in, in a different place. You're born in Cuba, I'm born in Canada. You're the lone uh, American. American born. Uh, I'm an American citizen, you're an American citizen, we're all Americans here. But that's, uh, that, is a, that is a part of the world that we're, uh, we're a part of. Whereas there are people, uh, and, and if one thing, and, and and I call myself independent, but I often go left and, and towards the Democratic Party on many issues. But, uh, but a lot of times, uh, as you look at, at uh, uh, what's happened in this election, you see that there's a lot of poor white communities in this country that mm -hmm. are hurting. Yes. And there's a lot of pain and there's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of anger against Washington. Mm -hmm. And so they've latched on to you know, the worst version of that in, in a Donald Trump candidacy. So, so you, you know, you have to understand where people are coming from. You have to understand um, the, the feelings. But at the same time, and, and to reword what you said before, is, is I believe the church should be the conscience of both parties rather mm -hmm. than, and you said the follower, yes. which is the same point. Yes. Uh, we, we need to, um, you know, I, I believe there should be, you know, very committed followers of Christ who do, become a part of both parties. Sure. Well, we're going to take a small break and uh, we'll come back to this uh, very interesting topic. There's no better way to start the week than to come into his presence and dedicate the rest of the week to him. I like um, the children's church downstairs because we learn a lot of new things and we have a lot of um, cool teachers. We believe the church is a place that, uh, that enables a person to, to be healthy in life where we get to know other Christians who share our struggles and have uh, similar concerns that we have. And then you come together as believers so that, that only enhances and pretty much strengthens your walk with the Lord. Like you need to fellowship with other believers because that's how you grow. You could do anything here because it's just free and you can learn 
learn about God. You can't do it on your own, and you can't say, oh, I'm just going to read the Bible and I'm going to stay home. Like, you need to be in fellowship. Welcome back to Faith and Reason. Still clipping there for Fort Lee Gospel. And certainly, if you're in the area, we invite you to go and worship with uh, Pastor Rick and his congregation. Uh, if you're near us in uh, Cliffside Park, we're at 777 Anderson Avenue, and uh, our service is at 10 a.m. We have some school. 11 a.m. we have worship, and uh, Wednesday night we have our Bible study. We're studying the Epistle to the Romans, and uh, all the stuff that we are doing is also on Facebook, uh, including our program Faith, Faith and Reason. So we invite you to go there and like us and uh, follow us and learn more about the Word of God. Uh, also, Brother David, if you will tell us about your ministry, St. Anthony's Union City, and uh, lector, Eucharistic minister, teacher. And however, I can fill in to help out with different things. English Mass, 10 o'clock, come and see me. Uh, the other Masses are in Spanish, before and after, mm -hmm. three, three Masses. Okay. Well, we had a number of things to deal with. And maybe at uh, this time, I want to shift the gears a little and uh, get a more Catholic perspective. My own curiosity, of course, is I know that I can see, uh, well, what would, what would be the case of the Catholics supporting Trump and the case for supporting Hillary, and would they or wouldn't they support either candidate? What would be what would be the stance of the Catholic Church? Well, I cannot speak for the stance of the Catholic Church, but rather from my own Catholic understanding, mm -hmm. because I'm not an official that way. Mm -hmm. But I can say that, uh, based on the issues mm -hmm. and on the Catholic television network, they're promoting focus on issues, not on personalities, mm -hmm. and that's the that's the direct focus. Is it pro-life? Are they pro-life? Mm -hmm. are, are they, they have a, a, you know, a, a marriage standard that fits the Christian Catholic understanding of marriage. Mm -hmm. And so, and those are just two of the issues. Uh, they could see that the Catholic approach to, um, uh, let's say, uh, the death penalty mm -hmm. has changed. It used to be very pro-death penalty, and now the American bishops are very strong with not having the death penalty. That doesn't mean that the individual Catholic cannot say for themselves what they feel and believe in their own good conscience. Mm -hmm. So I find myself saying, all right, you have um, what a person will do when they're in office mm -hmm. is, it could be a mystery because it could be a surprise package. Mm -hmm. uh, in some cases, I find myself saying, uh, sometimes I would, when Trump speaks, I don't want to listen. Uh, but I find that personally, the same thing with Hillary. And I don't want to touch on all the little peculiarities mm -hmm. uh, of the different candidates. But as I said, I would have preferred some of the others. Now, interesting enough, I remember one of the things that when John F. Kennedy became president, one of the great fears was that since he was Catholic, he would basically be kissing the Pope's ring and uh, yeah. the nation would be under Catholicism. Uh, but now, you know, now one of the concerns is the opposite. Uh, you know, it almost seems like the Pope seems powerless because you have so many Catholics who would actually vote or do things that would be contrary mm -hmm. to Catholic doctrine. How, how does the Catholic, I mean, how does the Pope, how does the Catholic Church deal with it? I mean, I, I mean, seriously, if I was Pope, I mean... We'd I mean, all be in trouble. You'd all be in trouble. <laughs> I because I would think, I mean, I would see, I would see, you know, not remember... I'm Greek Orthodox. Now, <laughs> now, you, you think of all, all the politicians who yeah. vote, mm -hmm. con who are Catholic, who would profess to be Catholics, who vote contrary to Catholic Teachers, doctrines and right. issues, True. and yet they're given the mass, which to me would have been the way to stop it and say, you know what, you can't have, you can, if you're going to vote that way, fine, but you can't take the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Is that still done? or is Absolutely. In fact, uh, Bishop Dozier of Memphis, Tennessee, was allowing mass confessions. He was brought to Rome and told, stop it. It's articular confession to the priest, and that's it. He obeyed. Mm -hmm. He had a choice. And the same thing with uh, various other, Theodore McCarrick uh, in Washington, he was allowing politicians in the televised mass who were pro-abortion to come up for communion. Mm -hmm. He himself was criticized by the Pope and they stopped it. The pre uh, previous Pope though, yeah, not, oh, oh, this, yeah, not no. the current. Two, two the, previous Popes, right, right, John right, Paul II. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And so we see then, uh, there sometimes is a fine line of saying what's permissible. There is such a thing as Catholic descent. But when universities such as Georgetown uh, starts preaching and teaching something that is contrary to Catholic dogma, they, in fact, they may have already lost their Catholic status. Mm -hmm. 
as being able to say they are a Catholic institution. And this is happening in a lot of places mm -hmm. where very liberal, excuse me, modernists mm -hmm. want to change Catholic dogma or ignore it, even yeah. worse, yeah. the indifference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, the story in the paper today, we're taping on uh, October 3rd, uh, Rosh Hashanah, all that kind of stuff, but uh, the story today is that the Pope, in an interview, uh, encouraged priests to be pastoral to the transgender community as opposed to, uh, which is, and, and I think what you're describing, and just to, you know, is, is the past where, where from the papacy they're saying, okay, you need to align the, the Roman Catholic politicians to their own doctrine, whereas this Pope seems to be much more you know, meet people where they are, yes, and uh, yes. and don't don't be too judgmental, and, yes. and all that. That's a different tone. It's a very different tone. But there's a clear difference, as Brother David pointed out in a, in a previous show, and I appreciated that. That there's a difference between uh, the Pope condoning a pastoral mentality mm -hmm. and him saying that's dogma, right? Yes, and saying that's that true. that's the teaching. That's, that's like me saying, you know, if someone came to me and they were transgender, that I would minister to them. Doesn't mean that I would condone correct their right. behavior. So right. that, there's a big uh, no, a and, big and difference. There. Yes. And, and you could read the headline of today's story and say, oh, Pope is supportive of transgender. Well, that's not really the story. It's sort of a, a take on it. And uh, he's, not, he's not changing the teaching to be uh, pro-transgender uh, or say that's a, an equal choice to staying the same gender you're born with. Sure. Uh, but at the same time, he's encouraging people, to, the, the priest, to be pastoral. And, and condemning priests who are judgmental and, and calling a transgender person going through transition is going to hell. And that was the example mm -hmm. given. Yes. Um, so it, it's, it's a complicated issue. And, uh, and of course, they, um, you know, a part of the uniqueness of the Roman Catholic tradition in our topic today of responding to politics is that, that you do have a unified front, whereas as we talk about the evangelical tradition, you know, we don't have a pope, we don't have a one leader that we all are supposed to align ourselves with, um, but there is some general agreed upon principles in the evangelical But there tradition. are leaders. Yes. There are leaders, Especially of within the evangelical, I think that the more, the, the more liberal, actually that could be called progressive. Progressive, uh, yes, yes. The more progressives would not it's disguise. <laughs> that's what they do, it's man. A so, hey, man, I'm just it's telling you what they have. I, 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 that's who I, yeah, I yeah. hang out with everybody, yeah. so I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, the more progressive would say that they don't really have like that defining. They're they're still looking for that kind of defining uh, thing. Where the evangelicals, even though they they disagree with the conservative evangelicals, they would say at least they're unified mm -hmm. in having certain issues, certain. Uh, right. and so they do have representatives like James Dobson, people like that right, who. Right. You know, who uh, who, who are seen who speak a, or are seen with a certain kind of authority, yes. kind of moral yes. authority when they speak to uh, to the to evangelical church. And right. with that, we'll turn it over to Protestantism. How how does the Protestant church uh, respond to the whole uh, Hillary uh, uh, Trump? Well, um, yeah. Again, it's uh, I guess to speak for the majority, mm -hmm. I. My sense and, and my readings and, and talking to people I know who are evangelicals and uh, who have become Trump supporters, uh, almost none of them were early adopters. You know, at, at the beginning of the process, when Trump was running against 15 people, he was like the least Christian choice in, in the dais, you know? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so there was very <laughs> few evangelicals were early supporters of Donald Trump because of his arrogance, because of his, mm -hmm. um, you know, the way he carries himself is anything but Christian. And, and so that's, but, but the argument has become for evangelicals is that um, one of the key issues is that the next president will probably replace two or three uh, Supreme Justice oh, yes. uh, mm -hmm. appointees. So, so do we want Hillary bringing in liberal uh, justices, or, or which would sway the court for years and years, mm -hmm. and uh, and and arguably be bad for conservative Christians, or do we want someone a very flawed candidate who would be willing to, um, you know, put justices in place, which would be a, a conservative voice for the sake of morality and for the church, um, and so that that's really one of the key issues and then as you said before is that um, you know looking at the platform of the Republican Party mm -hmm. looking at the platform of the Democratic Party and saying beyond the individuals leading it which one do you support and uh, and most evangelicals would then say we would support the Republican platform and uh, so that's 
you know, that, that's an argument for Trump as evangelical. Um, you know, at the same time, there are, there are evangelicals, <laughs> whether they be young, whether they be uh, uh, more along the lines of uh, looking at other issues, more the urban evangelicals, more of the mm -hmm. uh, evangelicals who are supportive of uh, uh, immigration rights. You brought that up before. Um, you know, there's a lot of anti-immigration issues. I pastor a church that has plenty of immigrants in it, um, and many of my friends were not born in this country, and, and some of the rhetoric is quite scary from Donald Trump, and, uh, uh, and, and he's, he's hit a note with a lot of Americans. A lot of people agree with him, and, and so it's not just a, yeah. a fringe idea. It's, it's a mm -hmm. very important one. Uh, so, yes, um, there are evangelicals who are... Uh, are saying, you know, we're not in love with uh, Hillary Clinton, um, and yet uh, we feel that she's more qualified and the better candidate at this time. Well, we have about three minutes. I want to give it back to David. And yes. maybe, uh, as you look at the candidates um, uh, and you look at the Protestants and the way they are looking at issues, uh, what's the Catholic reaction to that? Well, uh, I don't disagree at all with what he said. In fact, I emphasize to people that ask me, Look at what happened for the 1974 Supreme Court decision on abortion. Mm -hmm. The scale was not tipped in favor of conservative. It was progressive. Mm. 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 <laughs> not that, yeah. No, so we have yeah. to see there has to be a little more balancing, yeah. and it's not going to come from Hillary. Yeah. Well, you know, um, for me, it's a, a, you know, even when I say progressive, obviously the fact that I can use the word means that I listen to them and I read them. And... Um, to me, there has to be a greater dialogue within Christianity mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. Christianity should not just be evangelicals. Uh, it's more than evangelicals. It is people who believe in Christ. So it is a, a mm -hmm. bigger umbrella. But I think, the tr I think evangelicals, one of the things that's wrong with them is that they are in bondage to a party, and I think that they should, uh, mm -hmm. should not be there. They, they mm -hmm. should have greater flexibility. So God forbid the party goes bad or they go, you know, like mm -hmm. Donald Trump right now, which I've seen certain evangelicals say, well, no, I'm not voting for him because right. they are, they're actually making the case for no vote right. <laughs> right, right. because they cannot in good conscience vote for Hillary, but they cannot vote in good conscience mm -hmm. for, uh, for yeah. Donald Trump. And what, what will we say to those Christians? We've got about two, two minutes. Uh, let me give you a, a one-minute answer, and, and I think this is a perspective that needs to be heard, is that, um, that when you look at the Bible, one of the fundamental ideas of a, of a leader in the Old Testament, whether it's Proverbs chapter 31, is to care for the poor and the needy. Now, I, in my mentality, the poor and the needy include the unborn child, and, and so I, I don't think the abortion issue is off the table based on that, but which party and uh, which candidate is more concerned with, uh, with issues of poverty in America, uh, the, the least, the senior care, the the young, um, who is, is more concerned? Now, now, people will come to different conclusions, um, but, but arguably, um, you know, the Republican Party has been more aligned with, uh, with cutting taxes, cutting programs to help the poor. That's Let's been their... We only have a minute, so I want to rebuttal okay. that quickly. The okay. Old Testament is much more about the poor, just the poor because it has a lot of moral issues. And, and God, to say that God would condone children being aborted, it, and that would be secondary in his agenda. I would disagree, but we only have a minute, so we can't. No, no, no. I, I'm including. I, I would say all, and I wouldn't yes. say it's just yeah. the leaders. It was the community mm -hmm. that was in charge of taking care, care of everybody, not, not uh, leaders per se. But right. we're we're running out of time, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm, we're actually coming into another topic. We should have made yeah. we should have made this the beginning Earlier. instead of the end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we thank you for uh, joining us. We do pray that you'll uh, look seriously at the issues as a Christian and, and consider uh, what is best and of course uh, obey your conscience as you do so. God bless you. Thank you for watching Faith and Reason. Please join us again next week. We invite you to visit our pastors at one of their churches, Pastor Rick Spence at Fort Lee Gospel Church, or Pastor George Crespo at the First Baptist Church in Cliffside Park. Check out our websites for more information.